It's NFL mailbag time here, and Mitchell Renz from Chat Sports ready to answer your questions. Before I get into them, I got to give some love to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. If you guys are looking for some healthy cereal, if you have a sweet tooth and you need something to eat late at night, dude, this stuff, absolutely insane. Like, when you're eating it, you can't believe that it's actually good for you. Go to magicspoon.com slash chat where you guys can save $5 off your very first order. And I'm going to promise you, try peanut butter or cocoa. Won't let you down. All right, let's get to this first question here. M. Miller 916, who is your Super Bowl favorite, Mitch? I mean, I guess I got to say the Kansas City Chiefs, but it absolutely pains me to say that, and it's about as chalky as it gets. In terms of what team do I think is maybe not a chalky pick, but I would like to see in the Super Bowl, I'd like to see the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, I like what those guys are doing. All right, Cody, you're next up here on NFL Daily. Thoughts on what Caleb Farley could be for the Titans – thinking the back injury will be fine. I mean, until I see him out on the football field, it's hard to be able to say how much I think the back is going to be an issue. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I love the tape on him. He was my number one cornerback before all the back stuff came out. So if he's healthy, he's going to be elite. The Fat Rat. Who says no? Packers get Jalen Hurt. Yeah, they'll be hurting if they get him. And a second 22 uh, pick. Eagles get Aaron Rodgers. I mean, come on, man. Like, Jalen Hurts and a second-round pick for Aaron Rodgers. No. I mean, there's just nothing. It's just absolutely no. Uh, no. The Green Bay Packers hang up the phone. They laugh at you. If you're going to give me Jalen Hurts and you're getting Aaron Rodgers, you better throw in another three, four first-round picks because I don't want Jalen Hurts. He's, he's probably, not even probably, he was rated my worst starting quarterback in the National Football League this year. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Let's get to 250K. The guys that were on our live NBA show the other night, they passed 248,000. Let's get to 250,000 subs. The more subs we get, the more videos we can launch. I know it's the offseason around the NFL, but we don't have any days off. This is how we pay the bills around here. And if you want to be able to keep the shows free, well, guess what? We need more subscribers. If you already sub, take that link that y'all see below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. I said it to some friends. All right, Jordy Walsh, you're next up. Should Seattle extend Jamal Adams or Quandre Diggs or both? I guess it depends what you're going to pay Jamal Adams. Like, I don't think Jamal's a top five safety. He's a good player. He does what he does very well. But if he wants top end money like a Justin Simmons, I'm going to go tell him to shove it personally. And then in terms of Quandre Diggs, another good player. But would I extend both? Probably not. It's just it's like how much money do you want to pay them? Diggs is an okay player. Adams is a very good player, but they're both going to be asking for a lot of money. The other issue is this. You are trying to win right now, and you are in your win-now mode. Plus, you gave up two first-round picks for Jamal Adams, but it's going to come down to money. But if Adams wants to get paid top dollar and if Diggs wants to get paid a lot, I'm probably going to go ahead and say no. All right, we got Z Buchu. Uh, do you think the Rams should or will sign Golden Tate? Well, Tate did mention the Los Angeles Rams of being a potential team that he'd be interested in going to because of his old connection with Matthew Stafford. I mean, would he be able to fit on this roster? Yes, I do think so. The best Tate that I have seen is probably with him with Matthew Stafford in his days with Detroit. It's really going to come down to, is he fully healthy? Is he fully invested? And can he not be a nuisance in the locker room? And can he be a good teammate? Because that has definitely been some of the issues with Golden Tate in the past. But... If L.A. really believes that they need a receiver, if he's willing to sign a cheap contract, then sure, why not? All right, we got Whisper Slayer 800. Who will start in Raiders versus Seahawks preseason, Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, or Nathan Peterman? I'm not going to roll out Derek Carr personally. You know he's going to be your starting quarterback, so why not see what you got in Marcus Mariota? But also, why not see with what you got in Nathan Peterman because you don't want to injure Mariota. So I'll say a little bit of Mariota, a little bit of Peterman. We got Nick Fury, 55. What impact would Xavier Howard have on the Seattle defense if Seattle decides to go all in on him? I mean, he would be a huge help, right? I mean, he's a top five, top ten cornerback in the National Football League. He would probably be their best defender. I don't know if that's a bit of a push. I love Puna Ford a lot. Super underrated. I think Xavier Howard's better than Jamal Adams, personally, uh, in terms of what he'd be able to bring to a team. This The issue is with Howard is can he stay fully healthy, but... Yes, he would obviously really, really help that secondary, and that secondary does still need some help despite making a few moves this offseason. 
If you guys haven't already heard of Magic Spoon, well, I need you to listen the heck up. We found unbelievable tasting cereal that, believe it or not, it's good for you. Ripley's, believe it or not, they called us up and they're like, have you heard about this Magic Spoon stuff? It's real. And we're like, yes, we have. 13 grams of protein, 4 grams of net carbs, 0 grams of sugar, and it's all available for you. How? At magicspoon.com slash chat. Save $5 off your very first order. Maybe, just maybe, you didn't get your dad anything for Father's Day. Well, don't worry. I got your back. Fourth of July is coming up. I plan on going to a pool party. I don't know about you. I don't look my best right now. If I want to be able to eat the food that I want, continue to eat sweets, and have a halfway decent look, well, guess what? You can go ahead and do all of that thanks to Magic Spoon. Unbelievable tasting flavors because all the good cereal that we had growing up as a kid, let's face it, it is, uh, to say it lightly, it's not good for you. Do you ever look at the back of a cereal box and you're like, what the heck is that ingredient? What is that ingredient? That ain't going to happen with Magic Spoon. All natural ingredients, no GMOs, and it's high-quality stuff. It's magicspoon.com slash chat. If you want a recommendation on which my flavor flavors are, big fan of the Frosted, which I actually have right here on set. I'm in love with the cocoa over here. And if you love peanut butter, top-notch peanut butter flavors, it's magicspoon.com slash chat. $5 off your very first order. We got Burning Spades. Shout out, y'all. Just asking. Why have Twitter when we have chat sports? Also, who could Atlanta look to add to help with secondary and O-line thoughts? You get Twitter to, more, to talk to us a little bit more. Like, I can't talk to all y'all all the time on the show. That's why I tell people to DM me because then we can talk about other things going on, right? In terms of who could Atlanta look at to add help in their secondary and their O-line thoughts? I mean, if they want to pay a lot of money, Stephon Gilmore could be out there. I actually said this earlier. Damon Arnett could be a player who was drafted in round one where it seems like the Raiders have already moved on from him. So if you want a cheaper player in the secondary, give uh, give the Raiders a fourth, fifth round pick. I think he's yours. And then on the offensive line, it really comes down to which positions you need. I still kind of find it hard to believe that Rick Wagner is still out there, even Trey Turner as a guard. But if you need a tackle, I'd probably go Wagner. If you need a guard, Trey Turner. Let's go to Jeremiah Robinson. Who will win Rookie of the Year? I mean, in terms of offensive, the chalky answer is Trevor Lawrence. On the defensive side of the football, I'll throw out a name like Jalen Phillips because he actually has an opportunity to get a lot of sacks. You could also look at Merrick from the Raiders. He's going to have a big-time opportunity to get on the field a bunch. Usually, there's a top defensive guy taken. You didn't really have that too much this year. So, I'll say Jalen Phillips or Merrick. All right, we got a more blender. Who's the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC West? If the Broncos make a trade for Rodgers or Watson, it's the Denver Broncos. As it stands right now, I'm still probably going to go with the Las Vegas Raiders because it could come down to quarterback play. Derek Carr is better than Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. I'll still take Derek Carr right now over Justin Herbert. If you were to ask me, better quarterback probably the next five years, then I'll go with Justin Herbert. But uh, it's a good question, no doubt about it. I think all these teams could be very, very close to the exact same record. But who's the best team out of the three that you see on screen? Who is the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC West? If you think it's the Denver Broncos type B, Las Vegas Raiders type R, uh, Los Angeles Chargers type C. We got Christian Navarro. You're next up here on NFL Daily. Make sure you use hashtag NFL or Super Chat. Is James White or Falk the better Belichick era Patriot? I mean, it's a great question. I probably am going to go with James White. For the simple fact of he, not that he doesn't have a lot of talent, that's not fair, but he fit great in his role with New England. He was a great pass-catching running back, and Folk might have actually had a little bit more talent. But White, I don't know if he should have won an MVP in the Super Bowl, but there's not many running backs that I say, like, man, that guy should have won an MVP. And I get because he's Tom Brady, he ended up winning it. But I might actually go James White, but both guys had unbelievable careers. What up, Lil Eden? Can Tannehill win MVP? He absolutely can. If the Tennessee Titans finish the number one seed in the AFC, that's really what's going to be able to propel him forward. But last season, 33 touchdowns, 7 INTs. The yards definitely need to go up, but if he can throw for like 4,200 yards, if he can get like 40 touchdowns, maybe bring the interceptions down a little bit, increase some of his rushing, which, like, if you think that those are crazy ideas, I get that they lost Corey Davis, but they also added this guy named Julio Jones. They also have Josh Reynolds now. Derrick Henry is always going to be the focal point of that offense, but MVP does usually go to a quarterback. So if Henry's numbers come down a little bit and Tannehill's go up a little bit, 
Hey, and if they finish number one in the AFC, I've seen crazier things happen. What up, Big Roo? Do you think the Vikings will trade for Stephon Gilmore? I don't really think it's going to be the Minnesota Vikings that pull it off. Do I think that he would help that defense? Yes, immensely. I'm a, I'm a betting man. I think it's going to end up being the Arizona Cardinals. I, I just think that's a team who ended up losing Patrick Peterson. They've been very aggressive this offseason. They've definitely been in win-now mode. So Vikings, no. I'm going to put my money on the Arizona Cardinals. All right, Jason underscore Joiner, you're next up. Should Seattle sign Todd Gurley? No, Todd Gurley is washed up, and it pains me to say that because just a few years ago, arguably the best running back in the National Football League, had one of the best years that we've seen in quite some time when he was with the Los Angeles Rams. I mean, I think he had, what, like 30 total touchdowns. He was just bananas good. But last season, 195 carries, averaged 3.5 yards per carry. If you watch the tape, like his touchdown numbers are still very impressive. But, man, he's lost a few steps. So you have Chris Carson. You don't need another banged-up running back. Maybe you got to figure out what you got in Rashad Penny. But uh, I'm going to respectfully say no on Todd Gurley going to Seattle. I don't know where Gurley's going to end up going, but maybe maybe he ends up going somewhere else. But I, I don't think it's going to be Seattle. What up, Robert Bruce? Hello, Sam. Hello, Jeremy. Hello, Mitch. Thanks for the stream, Patriots. Uh, to still in need of a speedy wideout. Is there anyone out there, free agent-wise, available still, please? Free agent-wide receivers that have a little bit of speed on them, like D.D. Westbrook's a halfway decent name. He's not a super speedster, but back in 2019, he had 60 catches. I believe 2019, 2018, both 60 catches. If you're looking for a speedster that you could probably get for cheap, he's not on the free agent market, but it's a Bears wide receiver, Anthony Miller. Really good athlete there, so that could definitely be someone to keep in mind. Let's go to Highlights Highlighter. Do you think the Dolphins should have taken DeAndre Swift instead of trading down in the 2020 draft? I mean, it's kind of hard to say. I don't know if Swift would have had as much success, honestly, with Miami that he did with Detroit because he had so much success with Detroit because they had to check it down to him. So I like the question, but I think Swift's really happy where he's at right now. All right, y'all. If you didn't hear this story, Tom Brady called somebody a mother. Well, instead of saying the F word here at Chat Sports, we just say Tom. So who do y'all think Brady called a mother Tomer? Go down in the comment section right now, and I want you to type JG for Jimmy Garoppolo, MT for Mitchell Trubisky, DC for Derek Carr, type O for other. If you don't know the story, we have a show around Tom Brady calling somebody a mother Tomer on our channel. Just another reason to subscribe. Now, so if you're calling me a mother Tomer in the comments because I didn't answer your question, you can go ahead and hit me up on IG at MitchellRens365. More than happy to answer any of y'all's questions that happen. If for whatever reason I can't get to your question, you can always hit up producer Sam. He is at SamBrownCS on Twitter as well. So we always check our DMs. We try to answer as many as humanly possible because we get it. Chat sports, we're interactive, but we also want to be able to go above and beyond. So we check our DMs, answer your questions. If you also just want to tell me what's going on in your life, happy to help. All right, Shanab, what up, my man? Most underrated wide receiver for you. Mine is Adam Humphreys, and for cornerback, it's Bradley Roby. And this is not my first, my first non-Broncos-related question because he used to play for Denver, also A-Rod to Denver. Um, most underrated wide receiver. It's a really good question. <clears throat> I not that, that Not that he hasn't been great, but Terry McLaurin, to me, what he's been able to do with the quarterback play that he's had – I think is absolutely spectacular. So I'll say Terry McLaurin because I think if you gave Terry McLaurin somebody like Josh Allen, he could put up very similar numbers on what Stephon Diggs is doing. In terms of the most underrated cornerback in the league, I'd probably have to think about it a little bit more just simply because I'm an offensive-minded dude in terms of fantasy football knowledge. I'd have to take a deeper dive and look at some numbers for cornerback. But wide receiver, I'll go Terry McLaurin. Geno Bay, do you think Sam Darnold will have, an, have any success in Carolina? I hate to break it to you, but no. I, I'm not really the biggest believer on Sam Darnold. Do I think he's going to have more success in Carolina than we did at the New York Jets? Yes, I absolutely do. But would I have been Carolina giving up all the draft capital that they did for Darnold? No. But he has a great coach. He has a great offense around him. I'm definitely curious to see what he's able to do because if he can't succeed – with Christian McCaffrey, with Rod, <coughs> Rodney Anderson, with, uh, I understand they lost Curtis Samuel, but even like somebody like DJ Moore, and I'm going to start to think that it might be a little bit on Sam Darnold. All right, Anthony, you're next up here. What can my Dolphins trade for Kareem Hunt, or what should we give up for him in a trade, Mitchell? 
I mean, you're just probably not going to get Kareem Hunt. Now, I get that he'd actually be a very good fit in the Miami offense, but the, the Cleveland Browns want to be able to run with two running backs. They want to be able to rock and roll with Nick Chubb, and then they want to be able to bring in Kareem Hunt because that is a run-first team with arguably the best offensive line in the league. If you're going to give up picks, you'd probably have to give up a second, maybe a third-round pick for Hunt. Uh, I just don't really like giving up high draft capital for running backs. Not that he's not good, not that he's not great, but you can find other running backs a little bit cheaper, and you did a halfway decent job last season. But second, third round pick, I'd probably say for Cream Hunt. If Cream Hunt does end up getting traded, if anybody goes out and trades for him, I can guarantee you one thing, we'll probably be making a video around it here at Chat Sports.